so welcome guys i hope i am clearly audible and visible to all of you we are just about to begin the session which is targeted towards our university prof question discussion session so in your third prof part 1 you are right now giving your uh, forensic medicine prof okay but you are being taught this subject since second year onwards you give two semesters then you give third semester in third prof part 1 and then you give the final prof so our whole motive is to help you guide so as to how to attempt your university prof questions and you will see a very beautiful correlation between the teaching which is intended for future neat pg exams which you are going to give and your prof questions you will see that yes the questions which are asked in prof exams they are the same topics which are usually asked in neat pg exams or iniict exams or fmg exams and we will see that linkage and you will be amazed to know that you will find all your questions of my subject in e gurukul 4.0 notes that is for sure almost almost all the questions and the topics and that is why students are scoring nowadays more than 80% marks in fm subject and that makes us very happy so we are about to begin the session in which i'll be covering your my subject questions so let us see one of the papers of one of the universities which was held in december 2022 so th this is one of the recent papers now okay so i hope uh, i am clearly audible and visible to everyone now so if i show you yeah instructions to aapko pata hi hai ab instructions mein irrelevant writing reduces the marks this is the most important aspect never write anything which is irrelevant in your question paper that sir please pass me i was ill my girlfriend was ill so these things are not going to save you what is going to save you is your hard work so let us see that hard work how it is to be done smartly so you get one of the like the long notes then short notes this is the pattern of usual this is the usual pattern across universities no so like uh, suppose this is one of the questions define inquest how is evidence recorded in a court room or uh, how is it is recorded in a court of law then there is another long note that define hanging and write down the cause of death fatal period and post mortem appearances in a case of death due to hanging so let us see to these two big questions that whether you will study these topics in your future neat pg exams preparation answer is yes answer is very yes so this is the topic of summons inquest and negligence which we have covered in our egurukul 4.0 and these are the notes so you will see that what has been asked is about inquest and everything is there and this crisp knowledge is going to help you in your pg exams too so our motive will be to cover our prof questions also this is my motive that for my subject na students won't find it difficult that i am preparing for prof whether it will help me in my neat pg preparation answer is yes 100% So this was one of the questions, na long notes. What is inquest? Inquest is investigation or inquiry done by either police or magistrate. A police inquest, you all know, comes under one seven four CRPC. Okay. Then overall the minimum rank. These are the key points which we have to remember for our NEET PG exams. Like overall, what is the minimum rank of rank of police official for doing the inquest? Head constable. There is no harm in remembering this fact while you are preparing for your prof exam. This is the point which I am. okay if your preparation level right from the prof is towards your future exams just imagine what miracle you can create isn't it so the direction will be very clear you just have to do that hard work yourself so let us see this question so as to if this question comes what all things i will be writing in my paper so as to get 10 out of 10 yeah 9 out of 10 okay so i'll be writing that inquest is investigation or inquiry into cause of death then i will be writing in india we follow two types of inquest as made by britishers one is police inquest comes under 174 crpc then i will write one or two important points ki overall the minimum rank is head constable in special cases like in rape cases 
sub inspector becomes the minimum rank for doing the investigation but there are certain situations where a magistrate is called upon under 176 crpc now while you are preparing for your prof exams won't it be a smart thing that let us cover the sub divisions of 176 which are asked in our pg exams and i will be writing that in my prof exam too and i will be scoring with, with I, I will be scoring very good marks the examiner will become very happy now so 176 is further divided into 176 sub uh, subsection 1a where the inquest is done by judicial magistrates and we know the hierarchy of judicial magistrates these are magistrates who have done law who have uh, who have acquired law degrees bachelor's in law master's in law so the hierarchy is like second class is the lowest rank then come first class judicial magistrate and then come cjm it is the first class judicial magistrate who in metro cities is called as metropolitan magistrate it is the first class judicial magistrate who are referred to as principal magistrate in juvenile courts chief judicial magistrate is also called as chief metropolitan magistrate in metro cities this we cover in our power in our ranks of judges and powers of court and all so it is the same group of magistrates judicial magistrates then another category of magistrate is defined under 176 subsection 1 now magisterial powers are given to certain people who clear civil services exams so here the hierarchy is at the lowest rank you have executive magistrate also called as tahsildar above which lies stm subdivisional magistrate and on top you have district magistrate or district collector now when do these magistrates and why they have been given the powers because judicial magistrates have their own courtroom procedures to cater so that is why executive magistrates and sdms they share the workload in relation to which cases dowry death and exhumation orders then other cases like death due to police firing custodial death death in children's institution death in mental hospital like custodial rape cases which magistrate is going to investigate such cases judicial magistrate so this subdivision also we cover in our classes okay if you go by textbooks i will show you the difference like these are my notes now in igurugul 4.0 if you go by textbooks yes textbooks have also given okay textbooks have also given the same thing that these are the different types of inquest and the same portion which is important for your need PG, pg exams is there in your notes also so won't it be handy and it will be crisp now it will be like uh, streamlined like uh, if i go with this table given in one of the very good textbooks so what i will see is this is also written now this is not important for our pg exams so my focus is you should study optimum things which are going to secure your future also it will be a smart thing because see medical science is endless you cannot collect everything inside your brain matter because cranial capacity is limited but yes we have to cover police inquest magisterial inquest coroner's inquest medical examiner's inquest so yes this table is there and on top of that if you can remember that procurator fiscal's inquest is also there in scotland nothing is better than that <laughs> but there is no point in remembering a thing which is not important for our future exam you'll be segregating and you'll be getting good marks in your prof also this is the smart work which i am talking about so these are our different types of inquest followed in different countries in india we follow police and magisterial inquest this we know in us overall the best type of inquest in world is medical examiner's inquest this is the most superior system of inquest correct and in india which is the best type of inquest inquest done by judicial magistrate under 176 subsection 1a of crpc all these details we cover in our offline online classes e gurukul 4.0 videos also everywhere and this is a topic which is very very important for pg exams or inict exams in fact fmg exams too now second major part of this question was the major part was what will be the types of recordings of evidence now see all the things all these keywords i have already utilized in your notes only that recording of evidence also means examination of the witness if you focus closely now you will see that yes Recording of evidence ka matlab kya hota hai? There is no videography or recorder. There is no cam recorder person. Recording of evidence means when a public witness comes to the court after receiving a summon. Summon is a legal document also called as subpoena 
which compels a witness that you have to come to courts on a particular date at a particular time. What is the purpose for recording your evidence? So when that witness comes to court after receiving summon, yes, the lawyers are there to examine their witnesses. The lawyer who has called his witness, he will examine his witness first. What do you call that? That is what is called as direct examination or examination in chief. This is done by the lawyer who has called the witness. Then another type of examination is cross-examination done by the opposite lawyer. And what we should remember is two important stuff about cross-examination. What, what are those two stuffs? That leading questions are normally allowed during which part of examination of witness? We know cross. And what are leading questions? Questions which are answerable in yes or no. And it is this part which has no time limit. Now this has been repeatedly asked in our PG exams also. And this is your long note essay based question also. So it is very good now that universities are asking those things which are important not only for prof but for our future exams too. So we should focus towards those topics now. Once you focus towards these topics in your third prof part one, won't it become easy, very easy for you to cover this subject while you are actually preparing for PG exams? So keep that focus. When you are into a particular prof now, keep that focus that I have to read a subject, I have to clear my props, but I have to study smartly in a way so that my prof also goes nicely and I am tuned for my future exams too. Because reading absurd things is not going to give you anything in life, isn't it? So, what are different things happen in recording of evidence? Direct examination of the witness, cross examination of the witness, sometimes the redirect examination might be needed. Then there are court questions. Court questions are questions which are asked by judge at any time of judicial proceeding. Then in relation to legal sections now, we also covered that yes, all these types of examinations, they have been mentioned in Indian Evidence Act sections. So, this also you can summarize. In your notes, if you write this, yes, you will get 100% marks by the examiner. The direct examination comes under 137 section of Indian Evidence Act. 138 section defines the order of examination. That firstly, there will be direct examination of the witness, then cross, then redirect. 141 section defines leading questions, questions which are answerable in yes or no. And it is written that it is normally allowed during cross examination of the witness and 165 section defines court questions. So, 137 defines direct examination, 138 is your order of examination, 141 defines leading questions and 165 defines court questions. At least remember these four sections for your prof. You never know when you are going to give your PG exams, these will be asked in your PG exams. So, if you are writing something in extra, write those things in extra which will become future exam questions and those things are already there in your notes. So, this is one of the questions now. Let us uh, see another question. This was one of the long notes. Define inquest, how is evidence recorded in a court of law? So, this is what we have to write in these two parts of one question. Now, if the question is define hanging and write down the causes of death, fatal period and post-mortem appearances in a case of hanging. So let us see what all important things we need to remember here. So, define hanging and write down the causes of death, fatal period and post-mortem appearances in a case of death due to hanging. So, in relation to such questions, we have covered this topic in our asphyxial death topic very nicely. So, let us see what all things you need to write in your prof exam to score good marks. And you will appreciate that those things are, have already been taught to you in the class. Like if I have to define hanging in a simple way, this can be remembered. This is not to be mugged up that I have to ratify what is hanging. Hanging is a form of death which is caused due to exclusion of air from lungs. Exclusion of air from lungs in one word is called as asphyxia. Okay. So either there is exclusion of air from lungs due to compression of airways or exclusion of air from lungs or oxygenated blood from the brain. 
कि दैट द ब्रेन इज नॉट गेटिंग द सप्लाई ड्यू टू कंप्रेशन ऑफ द कैरोटिड्स सो हाउ इज दिस गोइंग टू हैपन एक्सक्लूजन ऑफ एयर फ्रॉम लंग्स और ऑक्सीजनेटेड ब्लड फ्रॉम द ब्रेन बाय मींस ऑफ अ लिगेचर अराउंड द नेक एंड द कंस्ट्रिक्टिंग फोर्स बीइंग द वेट ऑफ द बॉडी और द वेट ऑफ द हेड सच इज दिस इज व्हाट इज कॉल्ड एज हैंगिंग हैंगिंग इज एक्सक्लूजन ऑफ एयर फ्रॉम लंग्स और brain is not getting the oxygenated blood due to a ligature around the neck and the constricting constricting force being the weight of the body and the fatal period roughly is in minutes like uh, if it is due to suicidal hanging and if the death is due to compression of airways it occurs it occurs within 5 minutes 5 to 10 minutes on an average if if this suicidal hanging and the person is dying due to occlusion of carotids then the time taken for death is more than 10 minutes 10 to 20 minutes roughly so this is about 5 to 10 minutes this is you can remember 10 to 20 minutes judicial hanging the cause of death goes with fracture of c2 c3 vertebra which is also called as hangman's fracture and here the death is instantaneous due to the long drop of the person the person is made to stand on a wooden shaft and that shaft is removed suddenly so there is a long drop that leads to fracture of c2 c3 called as hangman's fracture now during during while i was doing autopsies i have also come across such cases that there was a case of hanging and the person has survived and we are called from like surgery department or whichever department the person is admitted that please give a forensic opinion about the injuries around the neck so there we have to report the injuries so first of all while you are examining i will come to the examination later on let us see the this part that cause of deaths then uh, what is the fatal period that this thing was asked na in the paper so in relation to delayed deaths remember the most common cause which is noted is this one hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy literature or textbooks they write many causes that the person can die in few hours to days after hanging due to aspiration pneumonia due to edema or hemorrhagic swelling of the pharyngeal tissues due to emphysema due to laryngeal edema or pulmonary edema but the most common one goes with hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy because the compression of the carotids was there and there was an insult in the form of in the form of cerebral hypoxia and that is eventually go go going to co cause death of the person within a period of few hours to few days such deaths are called delayed deaths in relation to hanging cases now coming to the cause of deaths this was also one of the parts na that write the cause of death in relation to hanging cases so let us see this was also now one of the part that write down the cause of death fatal period fatal period is in minutes due to compression of the airways it is 5 to 10 minutes due to compression of carotids it is 10 to 20 minutes got it judicial hanging instant death delayed death is in few hours to few days now coming to the cause of death like suppose i say that it is a case of complete hanging so in relation to complete hanging always remember in relation to complete hanging the most common cause of death goes with asphyxial mechanism what is asphyxia in one word exclusion of air from lungs exclusion of air from lungs in relation to incomplete hanging or partial hanging where some part of the body is touching the ground the case becomes a case of partial or incomplete hanging so here the most common etiology is seen to be cerebral hypoxia caused due to compression of carotids and we know one thing na that compression of larynx and trachea is going to cause asphyxial mechanism leading to death of the person we know compression of carotids is going to kill the person how much pressure is needed to compress the carotids about 5 kg how much pressure for larynx and trachea we know 15 kg and internal jugular vein needs the least pressure to get damaged that is 2 kg or get compressed so this data of amount of pressure to compress these vascular structures and this airways is in relation to only hanging deaths never apply this to strangulation deaths and we also know what is the most common cause of death in judicial hanging you should write yes here the cause of death goes with fracture of c2 c3 vertebra also called as hangman's fracture now the examiner will become super happy that you have given the fatal time period man lo time period nahi bhi aata if you write the cause of death in such a beautiful manner na you will get full marks for this part now the most important thing comes the examination aspect so 
as i have taught in my classes now whenever you are trying to learn the post mortem findings in asphyxial death imagine that you are examining a dead body and then things become very simple so let us apply that same technique over here just one second wow gurkamal you scored full out of full in forensics in gt ab isse acha kya hoga Nothing can be better than this. Keep up this uh, result. This को maintain करके रखना है आपको, ठीक है? अब let me do one thing. Let me tell you the post mortem findings in relation to hanging deaths, ठीक है? तो certify कर लेते हैं. This comes as a long note in almost almost all the universities across India. This is a long note and this is a very important topic for PG exam students. The approach which we will utilize is something like this. Suppose this is a dead body, okay, and you are examining this body, and the case is a case of hanging deaths. Now, what all things you have to remember? You can remember very easily if you approach like this. Let us start from top to bottom. First of all, you will examine the eyes. Let us examine the eyes of the person. So in eyes, which finding you can get that the eyes of the person might be open with dilated pupil, with dilated pupil, and we call this finding as Lee facet sympathy. And we should remember the etiology for this that why Lee sim Lee facet sympathy occurs. We know that this occurs due to compression of cervical sympathetic nerves. Cervical sympathetic nerves. And you won't believe this one finding became your I N I C T exam question. A lengthy question. The gist of the question was, what is the reason for the opened eye with dilated pupils? The correct answer was this one. Okay, so I is solving one of your P G exams questions. Let us examine this mouth area. What you will get around mouth, around mouth, while you are examining from top to bottom. Around mouth, you can get dry salivary stains due to compression of salivary glands. Yes, salivation occurs, and yes, those saliva, saliva is starchy substance. No? So you will see white color starchy substance around the mouth, around the angle of the mouth. Suppose the knot is over here and the head is like this. So yes, salivation will occur uh, at this angle. If the knot is over here. What will happen? The head will be like this. So now the salivary stains will be in midline. All depends on the position of the knot also. So you have examined the eyes. You have examined the mouth. Now you, we will examine this area, neck area. In the neck, what we are going to get is a ligature mark, which is going to run upwards and backwards behind the ears in a oblique orientation. So let us examine the neck area. So in the neck area, what I will get is suppose this is the fellow which was being examined. I will see a mark which is going like this. In relation to ligature strangulation, the mark goes like this. The green color mark showing ligature strangulation is called as transverse mark or horizontal mark. But the mark of hanging runs upwards and backwards. Why? Because the pressure is upwards and backwards. So, what are the characteristics of this mark? This mark is actually a pressure abrasion for us. This is also one of the PG exam questions. So when we are learning the findings for our prof exams, the most smart thing will be to learn in this mechanism, so that my prof is going to be high scoring, and I am also preparing for my PG exam. This is my whole motto. Okay. Now, ligature mark is a pressure abrasion, and this ligature mark in hanging is we know oblique in orientation. It is usually above thyroid cartilage. And usually it is incomplete in relation to slip knot, but it can be complete in hanging if the knot is a fixed knot, and the person does the act of hanging. Or mainly in relation to fixed knot, is mainly in relation to homicidal hanging. So these are the characteristics of the mark. We are just examining the dead body. We have not opened the dead body during autopsy. Now suppose the person remained hanged throughout night for eight to ten hours. In the morning, some people came to know that this person has done the act of hanging. Now, in his glove area and stocking area, yes, these areas will become the dependent areas, no? total gloved area and total stocking area. 
what you can get get is glove and stocking pms this is another important finding glove and stocking pms is it seen in all hanging cases answer is no never it is seen in only those cases where the person has remained hanged for at least 8 to 10 hours so that post-mortem staining becomes fixed in these area suppose the person did the act of hanging his he, he is uh, his death has occurred but the relatives have removed the body from the ceiling and the person is lying now flat on the table now pms will get developed over back okay because it will fix after six to ten hours so glove and stocking pms is seen only when it is a case of prolonged suspension in hanging cases so this is another finding which i can see over the peripheral limbs now i will start the autopsy so which incision i will be preferring anyone who are watching the session so the correct answer goes with i will utilize modified y incision and the first body cavity to open will always be head cavity and the last to open is always neck if you open neck first what you can create is prince lu and gordon artifact that also we can read during our prof exam preparation. What is what was the finding given by Prince Lou and Gordon? Prince Lou and Gordon told us that if you open neck, if you open neck first without removing head, extra vasated blood from the head area will come to the anterior part of cervical vertebral regions and will dilute the anti-mortem bruises finding, anti-mortem hemorrhages finding. What we were to look for in a case of asphyxial death where the death has occurred due to ligature around the neck? Bruises of neck muscles and soft tissues. Bruises means bleeding. Now the blood from the head has diluted all your anti-mortem findings. This we don't want. So this was first told by Prince Lou and Gordon, so called as Prince Lou and Gordon artifact. Okay. So this is the basic thing which we remember. What is modified by incision? We start either from angle of mandible or from mastoid. We go till supra sternal notch and then we go vertically till pubis symphysis. But neck is opened last. Okay. Itti hoge findings. Aapka page bar jayega. Your uh, two pages, two and a half pages will be filled. Till you write your co cause of death in hanging, complete hanging, incomplete hanging, fatal time period. Then you write these post-mortem findings. Now you can fill one more page by remembering something in extra, which are our PG exam questions. So I can also get in this case amusset sign. What is amusset sign? If I take about five centimeter section of internal carotid from this body, from this dead body, I have taken five centimeter section of internal carotid, and with a scissor I have cut it open. Now what I can get is transverse tears of intimal layer of internal carotid called as amusset sign this also we can remember okay. and in relation to hanging deaths which type of hyoid fractures occur let us correlate that thing outward compression fracture so if i draw your hyoid bone in relation to hanging deaths this fracture is usually noted where the hyoid bone has outer periosteum and inner periosteum in hanging the pressure is upwards and backwards so what happens is the fractured fragment moves outwards giving the name of the fracture as outward compression fracture of hyoid bone an outward compression fracture is like movement away from the midline so also called as abduction fracture abduction fracture and the fracture is usually of inner periosteum it can be unilateral, it can be bilateral. Okay, got it? So, these are our important PM findings in relation to hanging deaths. So, we are now fully prepared for your 10 mark questions. So, after finishing this, let us come back to the paper. Let us cover other topics too. The, the other topics also are very important PG exam questions. You will appreciate that there are short notes now. So let us see the short notes, all the short notes one by one quickly. One of the short notes is about defense wound, then you have battered baby syndrome, then you have counter coup injury, then you have cadaveric spasm. I hope anyone who has attended my classes, they are thorough with all these topics, isn't it? 
So what are defense wounds or battered baby syndrome? This we have covered. This we have covered nicely. That yes, battered baby syndrome, Munchausen syndrome by proxy, sudden infant death syndrome and starvation cases. They are mainly in relation to fetal deaths and starvation topic. So yes, battered baby syndrome is also called as CAFI syndrome or non-accidental injury of childhood or shaken baby syndrome. Where the psychotic parents, they beat their own child on a regular basis. So they create injuries in the form of abrasions and bruises of different, different age. That becomes one of the diagnostic feature. And what is the most typical injury in battered baby syndrome? Fear of frenulum of lips, like over here. Fear of frenulum of lips. Then due to the vigorous shaking of the child and kicking of the child and hitting of the child, what else can happen is avulsion fracture of metaphysis in relation to corner fracture or bucket handle fracture depending on the shape of the fracture either it can be corner fracture or bucket handle fracture like this of the metaphyseal region of long bones then in the rib cage what can happen is different age of healing of the fractures can be seen on chest x-ray as multiple beaded appearances of different different size multiple beaded appearance of different different size this is what is called knobbing fractures and what is the most common cause of death in battered baby syndrome subdural hemorrhage this is all what you need to write to score complete marks then in relation to defense won't we know that if a person is attacking someone yes you will defend yourself like this and if the weapon is a sharp edge weapon you can get cuts over the palmar surface of your hands and the cuts will be like in a orientation but if someone is attacking you another situation can be like this if the person is attacking you with a rod or lati if you do like this this is what is going to cause passive defense wounds mainly over back or forearm but if you are holding the blade of knife to protect yourself you are doing something actively so the injuries which you get over frontal aspect or palmar aspect of fingers is referred to as active defense wound the so defense wound is in relation to homicidal attempts when someone is trying to kill a person or hit a person so defense wound this is what you need to write defense wounds are associated with homicidal attempts and if the person tries to do something actively like holding the blade of a knife he can get a pattern of injuries over the palmar aspect of fingers and yes these are called active defense wounds if the person does if the person does something passively he can get passive defense wounds over back of forearm full out of full then comes counter coup injuries this topic also all these topics all these topics are there in your notes basically while i was recording for e gurukul 4.0 now prof students were there in my back end that i have to do justice to prof student and the justice has been done and for neat pg aspirants the videos have been recorded and i have guided them ki you have to skip these areas but prof students have to focus over these that is the difference so coop and counter coop is a very important topic for prof as well as neat pg exams and we have covered in all its detail that coop injury is all the injuries which occur at the site of impact counter coop is just opposite to the site of impact but what is the what is the catch catch is if the site of impact is occipital you get counter coop over frontal lobes of the brain because in the frontal area in the base of the brain you have got bony projections of sphenoid bone then laterally you have petrous part of temporal bone okay so if there is hit over back of head you get counter coup in the frontal area but if there is a impact over frontal end usually counter coup injuries over occipital lobe is absent because posteriorly the base of the skull is smooth from inside so if the brain makes a hit to this part of the skull base usually the counter coup injuries remain absent because the skull base in the occipital area is totally smooth okay then in our notes we have also covered the theories because i know i know that this will be asked to prof students so this is the area which prof students should cover that yes what are the counter coup theories telling us that why this happens one is a post positive pressure theory by lindenberg Another is a negative pressure, cavitation or tensile strength theory by Russell's. And the most accepted theory is rotational shear strength theory by Holborn. Lindenburg, then your Russell and then your Holborn. And you will get full out of full.
so this covers your another another yeah this is university paper discussion upd for university paper discussion like uh, what all things a student who is going to write third prof part one pro third uh, part prof one student going to write fmt prof exams what all things he should study and how he should study and you will see all these defense wounds types then active defense wounds they are all always already there in the notes okay. then one of the short notes was artificial insemination donor now this is a topic now which is asked across all the universities that write short notes on artificial insemination donor because there are few important points which needs to be covered about this then we will cover other topics too let us focus towards this topic which becomes a short note for all the universities <clears throat> how you should cover this topic now we all know and in every textbook what is given is that yes artificial in insemination what is this artificial introduction of semen into the reproductive system of a female to produce pregnancy and this is used for infertility cases so what are the types of artificial insemination artificial insemination homologous or husband where the semen of the husband is used okay but if the sperm motility is gone or the sperm motility is not up to the marks so now semen of some other person other than the husband is used that is what is called artificial insemination donor if i mix husband semen with donor semen this is what is called artificial insemination homologous donor so these are my three types now artificial insemination husband or homologous donor and then mixed variety and what are the aspects of donor the donor is advised not to ejaculate for two to three days before providing the sample but obvious because we want the full quantity to be retrieved in relation to spermatozoa then the person donor is also tested for a routine infections the life-threatening infections like hiv hepatitis b and collection of the semen can be done through masturbation or use of an electrical stimulator or use of a special condom called collection condom but what are the indications for artificial insemination donor Kab, kab donor semen use kiya jayega? when will donor semen be used if the husband is sterile then only husband is sterile nahi hai to aid nahi use karenge husband is suffering from some hereditary or genetic disease there it is an indication the wife is allergic to husband spermatozoa. This also happens. In relation to such cases, yes, AID is allowed. Husband suffering from HIV, hepatitis B, women is unmarried or a widow, lesbian couples. They want to carry a child. Yes, they can go ahead with this procedure. But that child will gain legitimacy when they will adopt the child. Okay? So there the adoption will have to be done by the couple. So these are the indications. This is what you need to write in AID as a short note, which is asked across all the universities. Just define them. And remember these simple indications. If the husband is sterile or suffering from HIV or any hepatitis B, hereditary or genetic disease. If the female is unmarried widow or lesbian couples are there. Simple. Now come to other short notes. Now see. Grievous hurt is defined under 320 IPC under 8 clauses. Let us quickly recap. Grievous hurt is defined in 320 IPC under 8 clauses. This is not only a short note. This is your Viva question. This is your PG exam question. Every exam question. Life mein jitne exam doge na, ye section is a very important topic. Hai. So, as a topic, we should have a command. Na. That what is clause number one? Emasculation. Emasculation is destruction of penetrative power of a male, which can be caused due to either direct genital injury or any thoracolumbar nerve injury. Why? Because thoracolumbar nerves, parasympathetic nerves are involved in erection of the penis. So basically, emasculation is loss of that erectile capability or impotency occurring due to direct genital injury or thoracolumbar nerve injury. Clause two is permanent loss of vision of either eyes. Clause three is permanent hearing loss of either ear. Clause 4 and 5 is related to 
फोर इज पॉमेंट प्राइवेशन ऑफ मेंबर और जॉइंट ऑफ द बॉडी बॉडी मेम लाइ मेंबर एनी बॉडी पार्ट हैविंग इट्स ओन फंक्शन एंड विच के नॉट रीजनरेट इफ डिटेस्ट फ्रॉम द बॉडी क्लॉस फाइव इज लॉस ऑफ पावर ऑफ मेंबर और जॉइंट विच वी रिमेंबर इज एम जे फोर में क्या करना एमजे को काट दो फाइव में क्या करो एमजे का पावर रिड्यूस कर दो वॉट इज सिक्स क्लॉस पॉमेंट डिस्फिग्रेशन ऑफ हेड और फेस विच कैन अकर ड्यू टू यूज ऑफ एसिड्स और due to injuries like incised wound lacerated wound why because these injuries over face will heal with a scar scar is a permanent disfiguration class 6 tak ho gaya one kya tha emasculation class 2 kya tha eyes 3 kya ears 4 and 5 kya mj 4 mein mj ko kaat do 5 mein mj ko reduce power reduce kar do 6 is disfigure kar do face ko 7th is fracture or dislocation of any bone or tooth and class 8 is the longest clause which has three parts what are the three parts any hurt which endangers life or which causes either of the two things for 20 days which two things either the person is in a severe body pain for a period of 20 days or he is unable to follow his routine pursuits for a period of 20 days ho gaya na khatam ek to aapka prof ka question secure ho gaya dusra aapne apne pg exams mein ek question ko secure kar liya so work accordingly for your future for your future is your ke liye nahi kar rahe so work in this direction and you will see when you are preparing for the exams now your confidence will be at another level because you will be prepared more than 50% you will be already prepared this to be utilized for across uh, every subject not only my subject because while you are writing pg exams now you have to recall the data of all 19 subjects and the best thing is if you start it from second prof You will do wonders in PG exam. This is how you get single digit rank. Then comes voyeurism. Ab voyeurism to ham logon ne rape laws me ekdam detail me padha ho. Voyeurism is also called scopophilia, scopophilia, and this is an offence under 354 CIPC, which is defined as whoever is watching or capturing private moments of a female secretly. Hatha? Itna hi to likhna hai. तो इसमें ये कर सकते हो ज्यादा से ज्यादा कि हाँ 354 सीरीज के बाकी सेक्शंस भी लिख दिया व्हाट इज़ 354 आईपीसी सेक्सुअल असोल्ट टू आउटरेज द मॉडेस्टी ऑफ अ फीमेल सेक्सुअल असोल्ट मींस यूज ऑफ फोर्स टू आउटरेज द मॉडेस्टी व्हाट इज मॉडेस्टी ऑफ अ फीमेल अ वर्चू व्हिच अ फीमेल हैज ओइंग टू हर जेंडर बिकॉज़ अ फीमेल इज अ फीमेल यू कैन नॉट कॉल हर अ प्रोस्टिट्यूट दिस इज व्हाट इज आउटरेजिंग हर मॉडेस्टी एफआईआर विल बी लॉस्ड अंडर 354 फीमेल अब्यूजेस अ मेल नो सेक्शन इन लॉ देन कम्स 354 ए A goes with A of harassment. What are things are sexually harassing a female? Unwelcome physical contact, demand for sexual favor, showing pornography to a female without her will, or making sexually coloured remarks to a female. 354A लग जाएगा. This is sexual harassment to a female. There is nothing called sexual harassment to a male in India. In India. Then comes 354B. 354B goes with B of disrobe. What do you mean by disrobe? Sexual assault to disrobe a female means to undress a female forcefully. Then comes 354C. This is what is called as voyeurism, and then come 354D. ये पूरा ही लिख दो. Examiner एकदम full on happy हो जाए and full on happy marks मिल जाए. 354D defines stalking. What is stalking? Repeatedly following a female, either physically or digitally, with clear prior disinterest shown by the female. हो गया खत्म. All these sections are a part of which law? अगर वो लिख दोगे ना तो if I am an examiner, I will give you some bonus marks. These sections are a part of rape laws. So rape laws को इंडिया में क्या बुलाते हैं? CLA. CLA stands for Criminal Law Amendment Act. तो अभी जो हम rape laws पढ़ते हैं, that is CLA 2019 Criminal Law Amendment Act. So remember the name of the rape laws. It's like remembering something in extra to get extra marks. What is souvenir bullet or retained bullet? Souvenir bullet or retained bullet is bullets which remain inside the body. So over a time, for our human body, they are foreign body, na? So foreign body reactions होंगे, fibrosis होगा. Why are bullets left inside the body? Because sometimes when the bullets go inside vertebral bodies, even neurosurgeons don't want to retrieve them because while retrieving, there will be chances of more neurological damage. So they leave the bullets there. Heat hematoma we have covered nicely in our thermal injuries topic. Heat hematoma can be due to extensive heat exposure to the head area. Then Heat hematoma is like extradural bleed, but here the extradural hematoma occurring due to heat exposure is not due to rupture of middle meningeal artery. Due to trauma, it is rupture of middle meningeal artery. But due to heat, if EDH collection of the blood in extradural space occurs, 
it is mainly due to rupture of bridging veins present in the extradural area. Remember this simple difference. And in the extradural area, due to the heat exposure, the hematoma has formed. And due to heat, what happens is this is collection of blood, and there is heat. So what happens is this blood keeps on boiling. If the blood is boiling, it will give an appearance of honeycomb. It will give honeycomb appearance. What will be the type of clot with the type of hematoma in EDH due to trauma? It is more like rubber. It is more rubbery consistency. Here it is honeycomb consistency and friable. So these are the important differences. If you assess the levels of carboxyhemoglobin, yes, in hematoma due to heat, there will be raised levels of carboxyhemoglobin, but nothing in relation to carboxyhemoglobin if EDH is due to trauma. So this is how you should remember the differences. These are two or three important points. Now, what can you PG exam? Mein kya sakte? Yehi sakte ki appearance is heat hematoma ka appearance. Kaisa hoga? Ya fir heat hematoma is due to rupture of middle meningeal artery or bridging veins. Answer kya lagana hai? Bridging veins. Then let us focus towards another short note that is Casper's dictum. Casper's dictum. Casper's told us a dictum that my dictum is awesome. Awesome starts with uh, these three alphabets na? A, W, E. A for air medium, W for water medium, E for earth medium. So what Casper's told us that according to my dictum, if the dead body is showing you bacterial putrefactive changes like color changes and gaseous changes earliest by 12 hours in air medium, the same dead body under the same ideal conditions if kept in water medium will show you the same putrefactive changes in 24 hours and the same dead body under the same ideal conditions if buried under the ground will show you the same putrefactive changes at 96 hours. This was told by Caspers that this is like 1 is to 2 is to 8. Earliest putrefaction will occur when the body is lying in an open air medium. Last to putrefy will be the body which is buried under the ground. This was Caspers dictum in relation to putrefaction and different types of medium. Now what is Kevorkian sign that also we have covered in relation to postmortem changes in a dead body. What is the utility of postmortem changes? Post mortem ka matlab kya Post means after mortem means death. After death, some changes occur in a dead body which we utilize to derive our time since death. Ki how much time has gone after death of the person? How much time has passed? This we call as time since death. Now, what is Kevorkian sign? Within few minutes of somatic death of a person, if you take an ophthalmoscope and if you watch the eyes of the dead body inside the retinal vessels, what you can see is segmentation of blood into columns like this. This is what is called Kevorkian sign. This can be seen within few minutes and it can remain till 30 minutes. So few minutes may shuru hota hai and it can be seen till 30 minutes of somatic death. What is this thing called? Kevorkian sign. Precipitin test, aap sab ko pata hai. what is the utility of precipitin test? It is used to differentiate the species of the sample, whether the sample is human or animal origin. Okay, then come to lynching. Lynching is homicidal hanging done by a mob of people. Ab usko thoda sa extend kar do. Hanging ke baare mein thodi baat baatein likh do. Zada exaggerated way mein yeh nahi likhna hai ki it was shown in Agnipath movie. So usi mein lynching dikhaya gaya tha na. The father of Amitabh Bachchan was hanged. So that was lynching. Us image ko dhyan mein rakhna hai and you will recall ki lynching kya hota. Few lines about metopic suture aapko likhna hai. So, metopic suture page of question I so you should draw a beautiful diagram. I'm telling you how to score good mark. So, beautiful diagram of the skull vault with all the sutures. Q metopic ke baare mein likhna hai. Sare sutures ko diagrammatic represent karo and you will get very good marks. Anterior fontanel, posterior fontanel. Then label this is coronal, this is sagittal, this is lambdoid. Anteriorly between two frontal bones, you have got metopic suture. And ek baat yaad rakho, metopic suture ossification occurs earliest by about one year. Anterior fontanel closure occurs at 1.5 to 2 years. Posterior fontanel between 0 to 6 months. Coronal sagittal and lambdoid between 25 to 50 years. Aisa nahi hai ki bat ke metopic suture ke baare mein ratna hai. Nahi karna hai, ye galat approach hai. Ki metopic suture ke baare mein pura pad gai. No need. 
यू विल गेट योर मार्क्स यू विल एटलीस्ट गेट योर पासिंग मार्क्स मान लो अच्छे मार्क्स नहीं मिले ना पासिंग मार्क्स मिलेंगे दैट इज मोर देन इनफ ऐसा थोड़ी कि हर क्वेश्चन में आपको फुल आउट ऑफ फुल स्कोर करना है तो दिस विल बी अ स्मार्ट वर्क ना यू विल रिकॉल द एज ऑफ सूचरल ऑसिफिकेशन विच आर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर योर फ्यूचर एग्जाम क्वेश्चन एंड यू विल ऑल्सो रिकॉल कि हाँ बेसी ऑक्सीपुट एंड बेसी स्पेनोइड दीज आर द टू स्कल बेस सूचर्स विच आर ऑल्सो आस्ड इन द एग्जाम तो इसको तो याद रखना ही है बेसी ऑक्सीपुट एंड बेसी स्पेनोइड दी सूचरल ऑसिफिकेशन अकर एट अराउंड एटीन टू ट्वेंटी टू ईयर्स ऑफ एज एंड इस डेटा को बार बार रिवाइज करना है किसी भी सूचर के बारे में कुछ भी पूछे आपको पता है कि लिखना है क्या यू हैव टू डू इट स्मार्टली ऐसा थोड़ी क्या हर टॉपिक के बारे में हर चीज पढ़ जाना है नहीं कर सकते नॉट ह्यूमनली पॉसिबल इन मेडिकल साइंस इट लीज बट बाई दिस स्मार्ट अप्रोच ना यूल बी प्रिपेयरिंग योर सेल्फ फॉर योर फ्यूचर एग्जाम एंड द लास्ट शॉर्ट नोट इज एडिपोसियर अब एडिपोसियर के बारे में तो सबको पता है the adipose here changes means hydrogenation of body fats into fatty acids because the dead body was lying in a hot and humid climate humidity means water water means h plus ions h plus ions will lead to hydrogenation of fats into fatty acids and these fatty acids like oleic acid palmitic acid stearic acid will inhibit further bacterial putrefaction means whenever adipose here and mummification is happening bacterial putrefaction is taken to be inhibited In mummification due to the extreme climatic condition, hot and dry climate. In adipose here, it is due to the production of fatty acids, and because it is hydrogenation, there will be offensive odor, and the odor of adipose here bodies is ammonia-like, ammoniacal odor, बोलते, and the appearance is yellowish and creamy. That also we know, and the changes can start as early as three days, but they will be visible by three weeks to three months. इतना ही तो लिखना है, इतना ही तो हम लोग पढ़ते हैं अपने पीजी एग्जाम के प्रिपरेशन में. तो वाई नॉट स्टडी इन सच अ मैनर कि हाँ मेरा ये अप्रोच से ना प्रॉफ्ट में तो एट्टी परसेंट मार्क्स आएंगे आई एम प्रिपेयरिंग माई सेल्फ फॉर फ्यूचर एग्जाम वेरी गुड इवनिंग अच्छन वेरी गुड इवनिंग सी दिस पेपर वी हैव डिसेक्टेड ना दिस पेपर वॉज ऑफ टेन मार्क्स एटीन मार्क्स ट्वेल्व मार्क्स टेन मार्क्स फिफ्टी मार्क्स फिफ्टी में से ना आपका फोर्टी फाइव भी कोई नहीं रोक सकता इफ यू इफ यू वर्क अकॉर्डिंगली यू वर्क अकॉर्डिंगली नो वन कैन स्टॉप फोर्टी फाइव मार्क्स नाइन्टी परसेंट मार्क्स मोर देन एनफ ओके सो दिस वॉज वन ऑफ द यूनिवर्सिटी पेपर्स देन वॉट आई हैव सीन इज आई हैव ऑल्सो गैदर्ड इंफॉर्मेशन अक्रॉस यूनिवर्सिटीज ना कि कौन कौन से टॉपिक्स है जो हर यूनिवर्सिटी में यूजली पूछे जाते हैं मुझे दो टॉपिक्स मिले जो थोड़े अनयूजल हैं बट दे कम एज लॉन्ग नोट्स तो व्हाट आई विल डू इज आई विल कवर दोज टू थिंग्स व्हिच आर आल्ड अक्रॉस मेनी यूनिवर्सिटी दोज टू टॉपिक्स लाइक दिस इज कर्नाटका स्टेट पेपर आरजी यू का पेपर है तो दे आस्क लाइक क्लासीफाई फायर आर्म्स क्लासीफाई पॉइजन एंड दिस इज लाइक अ क्लासीफिकेशन विच आई हैव सीन अक्रॉस मेनी यूनिवर्सिटी प्रॉफ पेपर्स Why not do a smart thing? कि इन दोनों क्लासिफिकेशन को ठीक है अलग से एक चार्ट बना के we will stick it in the study area and we will also stick the same thing in your washroom. If you don't study, at least you will go to the washroom every day. So you will have a glimpse of that classification and it will be done within a period of ten days. And you will feel that miracle. ये हो गया, याद हो गया. तो क्या याद करना है? Let us see. लाइक दिस इज अ सिंपल क्लासिफिकेशन ऑफ फायर आर्म्स अगर क्लासिफिकेशन ऑफ फायर आर्म्स आता है ना किसी भी प्रॉफ में तो आपको क्या लिखना है यू हैव टू राइट दैट दिस इज द क्लासिफिकेशन अकॉर्डिंग टू कंडीशन ऑफ द बैरल ये तो हम लोग पढ़ते हैं अपने क्लास में भी कि राइफल्ड वेपन होते हैं शॉर्ट गन वेपन होते हैं स्मूथ बोर ऑल्सो वर्ल्ड एज शॉर्ट गन वेपन अकॉर्डिंग टू द मैन्युफैक्चरिंग प्रोसेस यस इट कैन बी फैक्ट्री मेड कंट्री मेड अनऑर्थोडॉक्स गन्स ये ध्यान में रखना है इसलिए मैंने बोला कहाँ कहाँ दो जगह यू हैव टू स्टिक इट in your study area in your washroom so that you give a look at these things inko stress dal ke na ratne ki koshish nahi karni hai dekha bhi rahega na to yaad aa jayega ki ha aise likhna hai according to the muzzle velocity of the projectile projectile means either a lead bullet or lead bullet pellets lead bullet is present in a rifled cartridge lead pellets are present in a shotgun cartridge to so low velocity ke firearm weapon ho sakte hai medium ho sakte hai high velocity ho sakte hai ab isme murkhta wali baat kya hogi पुलिसनेस कि मैं ये वेलोसिटी याद कर लू नहीं करना है ये सब नहीं करना है मेडिकल साइंस में कोई जरूरत नहीं है यूजलेस 
useless low velocity medium velocity high velocity is going to give you the same marks itna dhyan mein rakhna apne brain ko stress nahi dena unnecessary facts ko yaad nahi karna life mein kabhi bhi according to the use used by civilians used by police used in war ho gaya theek hai isko civilians use kar sakte hai police to use karti hai war mein use hota hai artillery guns bhi to hote hai na फिर मिलिट्री क्लासिफिकेशन भी है कि स्मॉल आर्म्स एंड क्रू सर्व्ड वेपन क्रू सर्व्ड वेपन का मतलब होता है व्हेन मोर देन वन पर्सन इज रिक्वायर्ड टू यूटिलाइज द वेपन मतलब वेपन फायर करने के लिए आपको दो लोगों की जरूरत है उसको बोल देते हैं क्रू एक मतलब लोग चाहिए एक से ज्यादा स्मॉल आर्म्स कैन बी यूज्ड बाय अ इंडिविजुअल पर्सन क्या ये क्लासिफिकेशन टफ है राइफल्ड वेपन शॉटगन वेपन फिर मजल वेलोसिटी के अकॉर्डिंग लो मीडियम एंड हाई पुलिस यूज कर सकती है आम आदमी यूज कर सकते हैं वॉर में यूज हो सकते हैं स्मॉल आर्म्स एंड क्रू सर्व्ड वेपन्स खत्म एंड ये वाला ध्यान में रखना है फैक्ट्री मेड कंट्री मेड एंड अनऑर्थोडॉक्स गन्स हो सकते हो गया ना क्लासिफिकेशन का दिस इज लाइक अ पेट क्वेश्चन ऑफ मेनी यूनिवर्सिटीज एक और पेट क्वेश्चन है व्हिच आई विल कवर कि अब इसी जो लॉन्ग नोट आया ना ये जो लॉन्ग नोट था ना इसमें एक जिस्ट था कि व्हाट आर द वूंड्स कॉज्ड बाय शॉट गन मिसाइल्स एट डिफरेंट रेंजेस ऑफ फायरिंग now injuries caused by rifled weapons like pistol and revolver and injuries caused by shotguns this we have to cover for our future pg exams too and see the miracle the same thing is being asked in our prof exams hai na isme ek hi cheez to atypical hai na classification usko apne ko likh ke ek jagah chipka dena kaam khatam ho jayega 10 marks ka 20 marks ka question hai 2 into 10 do long notes hai 10 10 मार्क्स में से आपका 9 9 मार्क्स तो कहीं नहीं गया एंड दिस इज व्हाट वी हैव कवर्ड इन आवर बैलिस्टिक्स आल्सो ना इन आवर ई गुरुकुल 4.0 ऑल दीस आर डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ शॉटगन एंट्री वुंड्स कांटेक्ट रेंज में क्लोज रेंज में इंटरमीडिएट डिस्टेंट इन डिटेल वी हैव कवर्ड विद इमेजेस एंड ऑल एंड ये टॉपिक हमारे पीजी एग्जाम्स के लिए भी इंपॉर्टेंट है लाइक आई विल टेल यू इन आवर आई एन आई सी टी एग्जाम दे शोड यू अ फ्रेम ऑफ दिस इमेज and they asked what is the range of the shotgun and a important topic prof ke liye bhi future exams ke liye bhi to kyu na aise padhe ki prof ki to taiyari ho hi future exams bhi secure ho jaye so study in this manner whatever may be your source study in this manner and your future stress factors will be reduced in life we need to be happy so this is how we remain happy when we reduce our stress I hope injuries and all you have covered uh, that I am taking into account क्योंकि उसके डिटेल में अभी जाएंगे ना तो it will take lots of time क्योंकि पूरा ये topic is of uh, about thirty uh, forty minutes ठीक है so I am not going into that detail but yes this is a high level topic that we should always remember मेरा target क्या है ना कि इसको जरा revise करते हैं कि classify poisons this question also I have seen across many universities and then we will come to other short notes classify poisons so i have done a simple segregation of all the poisons according to their groups and you will find it very handy that yes one group which i should remember is start with corrosives corrosives mein classification mein kya kya aate hai acids alkalis acids lead to coagulative necrosis alkalis have a l alphabet and they lead to liquefactive necrosis strong acids can be organic or inorganic ऑर्गेनिक में आ गए ये सब फिनॉल ऑक्सैलिक एसिटिक सेलिसिलिक इन ऑर्गेनिक में आ गए अपने वो वाले वेरी स्ट्रॉन्ग वाले सल्फ्यूरिक नाइट्रिक हाइड्रोक्लोरिक स्ट्रॉन्ग एल्कलीज में सोडियम पोटेशियम हाइड्रोक्साइड अमोनियम हाइड्रोक्साइड मेटालिक सॉल्ट्स में आ गए बाइक्रोमेट्स क्रोमेट्स कॉपर सल्फेट फेरिक्लोराइड जिंक क्लोराइड ये सब आ गए खत्म प्रोजेक्ट्स खत्म हो गए अब आ जाओ इरिटेंट्स पे ये वाला तो अलग से आता है क्लासिफाई इरिटेंट्स and then write something about one of the poisons wo de denge arsenic ke bare mein detail mein likho copper ke bare mein so irritants ka classification separately a question so why not do a simple classification irritants can be further divided into inorganic and organic irritants inorganic mein metallic and non metallic mein classified hai non metallic mein wo sab aage phosphorus chlorine bromine iodine metallic mein aage aapke arsenic lead mercury thallium zinc theek hai ऑर्गेनिक में फिर प्लांट पॉइजन्स होते हैं एंड एनिमल पॉइजन्स होते हैं सो इरिटेंट्स आर इनऑर्गेनिक एंड ऑर्गेनिक इरिटेंट्स इनऑर्गेनिक में मेटालिक नॉन मेटालिक ऑर्गेनिक में प्लांट एनिमल एनिमल में स्नेक एंड इंसेक्ट वेनम कैंथराइड्स याद रख लो कैंथराइड्स व्हिच इज आल्सो कॉल्ड स्पैनिश फ्लाई और ब्लिस्टर बीटल स्कॉर्पियन भी याद रखो अब इसमें से स्नेक स्कॉर्पियन कैंथराइड्स ये हमारे फ्यूचर पीजी एग्जाम्स के लिए इंपॉर्टेंट है 
अपने को फोकस करना है इन सब पॉइजन पे प्लांट पॉइजन में अपने को फोकस करना है कि ठीक है कौन कौन से सीड्स पॉइजनस होते हैं जहाँ से क्वेश्चन आते हैं हमारे फ्यूचर एग्जाम में तो उन सीड्स को तो एटलीस्ट याद कर ले क्लासिफिकेशन ना try to fit in the one liners in the classification itself your classification will become interesting to aapko man karega ki main is classification ko pad jao aise nahi man karta aise aise kisi ko man nahi karega ki isko kaise memorize kiya jaye na but the simple trick is ye jo major poisons hain jahan se question puchte hain ye to aa gaye na inorganic wale to khatam ho gaye organic mein plant mein seeds ko yaad rakh lo and kuch plant poisons ko yaad rakh lo bas ऐसा नहीं है कि आपको ऐसे फ्रूट पॉइजनस लीव्स पॉइजनस ऐसे करके लिखोगे तो बहुत मेराकुलस हो जाएगा ऐसा नहीं है पॉइजन के नाम लिख दो प्लांट पॉइजन दीज आर द इम्पोर्टेंट सीड पॉइजन एंड देर आर अदर प्लांट पॉइजन लाइक दिस 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 बताओ एनिमल पॉइजन में स्नेक कैंथराइट स्कॉर्पियन तो याद दिस इज अवर सेकेंड क्लासिफिकेशन तो क्लासीफाई पॉइजन में एक लिस्ट हो गया क्रोजिप्स का दूसरा मेजर ग्रुप हो गया इरिटेंट्स का थर्ड मेजर ग्रुप इज सिस्टमिक पॉइजन इसको सिंप्लीफाई कर लेते हैं सिस्टमिक पॉइजन कंसिस्ट ऑफ सी एन एस पॉइजन एंड सीवीएस पॉइजन अब सीवीएस पॉइजन हमारे फ्यूचर एग्जाम्स के लिए बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक है कि ऑल ऑफ द फॉलोइंग आर कार्डियक पॉइजन एक्सेप्ट तो कार्डियक पॉइजन की लिस्ट तो वैसे भी याद रखनी है कि एवरी डॉन हैज अ क्वीन दिस इज हाउ वी रिमेंबर ना डॉन डी फोर डिजॉक्सिन ओ फोर ओलियंडर लाइक सेरेब्राथिबेटिया नीरियामोडोरम एन फोर निकोटिन हैज फॉर हाइड्रोजन साइनाइड ए फोर एक्ट क्वीन फोर क्वीनिंग खत्म हो गया लिस्ट अब ये लिस्ट तो हमारे पीजी एग्जाम्स के लिए भी इंपॉर्टेंट है देख रहे हैं ना क्लासिफिकेशन कैसे आपको हेल्प कर रहा है फ्यूचर में अपना हेल्प आपको खुद करना है विद दिस स्मार्ट टेक्निक ठीक है क्लासिफिकेशन तो याद करना है बट वही पॉइजन को क्यों ना याद करना है अकॉर्डिंग टू द क्लासेस विच आर इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर माई फ्यूचर एग्जाम्स टू एंड विच आर इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर माई प्रॉफ एग्जाम्स टू अब सेरेब्रल पॉइजन में आ जाओ तो सी एन एस स्टूबिलेंट्स हो गए सी एन एस डिप्रेसेंट्स हो गए डिलीरियंट्स हो गए स्पाइनल हो गए ये भी एक पुराना क्वेश्चन है कि विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग इज स्पाइनल पॉइजन आंसर क्या था जेलसेमियम ये दोनों नाम याद होने चाहिए जेलसेमियम एंड स्ट्रिचनेस नक्स वोमिका दीज आर टू स्पाइनल पॉइजन व्हाट आर द पॉइजन विच आर डिलीरियंट्स डिलीरियंट्स आर बेलाडोना कैनाबिस कोकेन धतूरा एंड हायोसाइमस ओके सी एन एस सी एन एस डिप्रेसेंट्स आर एल्कोहल एटलीस्ट रिमेंबर एल्कोहल एंड ओपोइड तो याद ही रहेगा एल्कोहल ओपोइड एंड सीडेटिव ओके and cns stimulants are amphetamines at least remember amphetamines and tricyclic antidepressants khatam ho gaya list appearing to be tough but you can make it simple kyunki ye poisons na aapko padhne individually bhi to wahi poisons ka group yaad rakh lo 100% likhne ki zarurat nahi hai this is the smart work to so, humne teen major group banaya na corrosive irritants systemic and all the major poisons are done ek aur classification mein ek list aata hai mechanical poisons ab mechanical poisons mein diamond dust aa jata hai hair aa jata hai powdered glass aa jata hai isko isko rat maro medico usko to ratna waise bhi aata hai isko rat jao and isko bar bar dekhte rahoge to aise bhi retain ho jayega to ye simple sa classification agar mere prop mein aane wala hai to mere ko prepared rehna hai if i am not preparing i am a fool why to be a fool and we have to remember this smartly taki mujhe un sab poisons pe focus karna hai jo individually bahut important hai mere future exam mein let us see that paper of rajiv gandhi university now see the short notes artifacts ab artifacts kya hote hain artifacts are changes in a dead body which is physiologically unrelated to cause of death what are the named important artifacts to agar artifacts ko summarize karte hain to ye hum pg exams ke preparation mein bhi padhte hain one of the artifacts is tachyonware if the eyes of the person were open what can happen is drying of a sclera part of eye and that can give rise to two yellow color triangular areas and they can become and they can become reddish and blackish 
then another postmortem artifact is fracture of c6 c7 vertebra which is also called undertaker's fracture another named one is prince lou gordon artifact which we right now covered in relation to asphyxial death wala long note jab discuss kar rahe the then in relation to ballistics we have kennedy phenomena and we have rial sima phenomena what is kennedy phenomena surgical alteration of gunshot injuries what is rial sima phenomena in relation to one of the cases in rial sima region of andhra pradesh what was seen was bullets were placed inside a abdominal stab wound so in relation to name of the place the name is given as rial sima phenomena okay now come to differences between suicidal and homicidal cut throat injuries these differences are given in each and every textbook so usme to detail mein jana hi nahi criminal negligence criminal negligence ye topic to bahut important hai for we doctors so we have covered the flow charts and the tabular differences of civil and criminal negligence so civil and criminal negligence is a very important topic ye to aapko padhna hi hai Transplantation of Human Organ Act, so Transplantation of Human and Tissues Act, ये अपने आप में important act है. This we cover while we do our regular classes for PG also, where I give you a handout ना. So handout में Transplantation Act, BCP and DT Act, ये सारे acts आपके salient points of all these important acts. It is already there. Then Poxo Act is also there. Okay? ऐसे करके जितने भी आपके टॉपिक्स देखेंगे ना मेजर टॉपिक्स विच आर ऑफ प्राइम इंपॉर्टेंस फॉर पीजी एग्जाम्स दे आर ऑलरेडी अ पार्ट ऑफ योर प्रॉफ एग्जाम ये तो अच्छा है ना कुछ चीजें अनयूजल रहती हैं अग्रीड तो वो अनयूजल चीजों को टेक्स्ट बुक से कवर कर लेना मान लो बहुत ही रेयरली कुछ एक टॉपिक है विच आई एम नॉट कवरिंग क्योंकि वो सबसे यूजलेस है बट प्रॉफ एग्जाम्स में पूछते हैं तो पूछते हैं तो कोई बात नहीं उसका शॉर्ट नोट्स बना के कीप इट इन योर नोट्स What is negative autopsy? During autopsy, the cause of death could not be determined because the postmortem findings were negative. The doctor kept some histopathological samples, some toxicological samples. All the samples also became negative. Throughout, everything is negative. The case is a negative autopsy case. The best example of such a case is vagal shock. The person dying due to vagal shock mechanisms. And about two percent of all autopsies are negative autopsies. I am telling you the lines which we cover during our preparation for NEET PG exam. Thing, these lines are important for future exams too, and these are your short notes also. Then coming to battered baby, this we already covered in one of the another university paper also. This was there. Positive signs of pregnancy I have nicely covered with respect to prof. Na, I know those areas which are like very important. So positive signs, presumptive signs, pregnancy and abortion topic. Na, I have nicely covered in Igor Google 4.2 in all its detail and with very good mnemonics and all. So, आपका वो वाला एरिया वहीं से कवर हो जाएगा. If you are like in second prof and you have not covered OBS guy, you have to cover na from prof point of view. So prof students wahan se cover kar sakte. Abortion to apne aap important topic hai. Criminal abortion, all the sections and all. Then coming to res ipsa locutor, res ipsa locutor is also a very important topic in relation to negligence chapter. Res ipsa locutor kya hota hai? Whenever obvious fault is done by your doctor, what happens is when the matter goes to courts, the judge will tell the victim. that everything is hence proved from your side you need not prove anything and now the judge will ask the accused that you prove that you are innocent who is the accused here the doctor will he be able to prove his innocence if he has done obvious fault like instruments were left inside the body cavity after a surgery and the suturing was done later on the patient recovered after one week in one of the x ray investigations that scissor is present inside abdomen abdominal cavity Yes, this is what is RIL, where the facts of the case they speak for the patient. Then comes grievous hurt again. See, I, I am picking the areas now which are like repeatedly asked in across different university. है ना? So grievous hurt अभी देखा था ना पिछले university prof paper में भी था. The thyroidism is like chronic lead poisoning. तो आपको lead, mercury, 
आर्सेनिक ये सब तो पढ़ना ही है थैलियम सो दिस कवर्स योर ऑल द इम्पोर्टेंट एरिया ऑफ दिस पेपर any other thing which you want to clarify any other topic which you want to clarify in relation to prof questions of your university now your queries are welcome my whole motive was not to tell you ki aapke e gurukul ke notes are apt for your prof as well as pg exams so have that faith have that belief ki aapke notes आपके दोनों एग्जाम्स के लिए एकदम फुलफिल है जैसे ये हैंगिंग चैप्टर में देखोगे ना तो ये टाइप्स ऑफ हैंगिंग डिस्कस करके वी हैव कवर्ड ऑल द डैमेज ऑफ नेक स्ट्रक्चर्स एंड अटॉप्सी ऑफ हैंगिंग जैसे अभी मैंने आपको बताया ना दिस इज हाउ इट हैज बीन कवर्ड सो दैट इट रिमेन्स इजी फॉर यू This is all the autopsy of hanging cases. I have covered all the practical details also. जो आपके लिए ना बड़ा interesting होता है. So all those practical details are also covered. वो extra चीजें आप अपने long notes में आराम से लिखो. Because they will become future PG exam questions. Any queries from your side? So these are the two papers which I thought of discussing as of today. There will be another session on first of December. there also i will cover two or three papers any queries from your side guys i hope you found the session impactful and helpful for your prof exams and your future exams too at least if you were not having this idea you have developed that idea ki ha i should study like this mera prof to hogega hi distinction mark se future exams will also be secured with a very good rank क्योंकि कई स्टूडेंट्स को ना देर इज नो वन टू गाइड पढ़ना कैसे सबसे पहले तो सोर्स सिलेक्शन कौन सा सोर्स से पढ़ना है तो अगर तुम बोलोगे कि डीबीएमसीआई के नोट्स आर एप ऑफ ऑनलाइन सब्जेक्ट्स अगर ये लीडिंग क्वेश्चन है माय आंसर इज यस तो हैव दैट बिलीफ एंड आपको फील होगा जब आप प्रॉफ का एग्जाम में बैठोगे ना यू विल हैव दैट फील क्या सब कुछ ही हो गया so any queries from your side guys to mere subject ke prof ke liye chinta nahi karni hai everything is there all the information everything is there all the stuff is there for prof to and particularly aapke liye maine wo sare topics bhi cover kiye hue hain all those topics like age estimation from x rays wo detail mein cover kiya hua लीगल सेक्शंस डिटेल में कवर किया हो सो दैट यू डेवलप दैट इनसाइट विथ स्टोरीज एंड ऑल ताकि आपको मजा भी आए फन फन इज इम्पॉर्टेंट ना तो पढ़ाई में फन फैक्टर इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट सो दैट हैज बीन केप्ट इन टू कंसिडरेशन सो टाइम टू से बबई वी विल मीट ऑन फर्स्ट ऑफ दिसंबर विथ टू और थ्री मोर यूनिवर्सिटी पेपर्स and i will try to gather more information with respect to some common questions like today we covered na four common questions areas like uh, asphyxial deaths then inquest area then classification of poisons classification of firearm weapon so in the same way i will cover more such areas which are like common questions across different universities so that it becomes helpful for many students
चलो जी बाय बाई टाइम टू एंड द सेशन ऑल ऑफ यू कीप योर स्पिरिट्स एंड कीप ऑन वर्किंग हार्ट कीप दैट स्माइल ऑन योर फेस दैट इज द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग पढ़ाई लिखाई तो होती रहती है चलो